Welcome to Layers of Communication with your host, Lydia Taggart. Life presents experiences that add layers to who we are and how we see the world, affecting how we communicate. Lydia is here to take apart the layers and create new ways to connect and build relationships. So now, please welcome the host of Layers of Communication, your core boss, Lydia Taggart. You're listening to TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and this is Layers of Communication. I am so glad to be back with you today. Last week, I wasn't here. Did you miss me? I missed you. Well, friends, I got to tell you where I went and why I was there. I am now certified to be life coach, executive coach, timeline dynamics practitioner, and an NLP practitioner. I got these four certifications. I'm so, so excited. Now I can help more people in bigger, better ways. I got got to tell you about my experience there because I knew NLP is called Neuro Linguistic uh, Programming. We can reprogram our brain and our subconscious. It's where most of our problems and how we deal with these layers that we look through life we can change that. You can redecide how we process our memories. It was so fantastic. So I had this phobia and I didn't know how amazing going to this NLP breakthrough stuff would really, really be for me. I'm going to tell you a little bit. It was about water and I, I was so afraid of water. I didn't ever want to go on a boat. I had several opportunities and I just send everybody on their way without me. And that was just fine. And, you know, swimming, that's kind of an optional thing. Don't really have to go swimming, but it wasn't always like this. When I was a kid, I, I went swimming and I loved it. And I would go off the diving board. Everything was just great. I went all the way to the point where my teachers were teaching me how to save lives if someone was drowning. So this one day, we're walking to a pool. And for safety reasons, I'm sure this isn't the way it is anymore. But in the past, we would walk past several swimming pools to get to the one that was open at this one particular park. And we're following my parents along. My brother and I are the last in line. And my brother fell in. And nobody else noticed. So I was standing there by myself. I thought, well, I've been learning how to do this. All I've got to do is hold on to the edge, reach out and get him. That's easy, right? So I get in the pool and it was closed. There was no lifeguards around or anything. It was really crazy. But I get into the pool, I hold on to the edge and I reach out to get him. And he grabs me and yanks me and pulls me down and steps on my head on his way out. And then I was drowning. <laughs> just for a moment, because I, I recovered pretty okay. But that set in motion a fear of water. And I hadn't realized how drastic this fear was until, um, you know, my husband, he would say, let's go to Hawaii for an anniversary. Let's go scuba diving. I said, you know, I would go anywhere with you, anywhere at all for you. And I have. We've picked up our family and gone to different places to support his job and different things. I'd do anything for my husband. But I could not see myself going scuba diving for him. I could not even imagine. The thought of that just made me break out in cold sweats. So at class, um, and these were really long days. So I don't know how much that plays into it, but I think I had a much, much bigger phobia than I thought I did. Because they were saying, who has a fear that they'd like to get rid of? And I said, well, I would like to get rid of this. I'd like to go scuba diving and go have some more fun. And, you know, when the kids go out on a boat, have the whole family go instead of just sending them with the friends. Or, you know, maybe everybody in my family wants to get a boat of our own. But I was like, yeah, we don't really need to do that. So anyway... I'm there and I said, yeah, I I would like to get rid of my phobia. And as the teacher was asking, what is it? Tell me more. What specifically, how is that affecting your life? Oh my goodness, I could not even control my sobbing. I was so scared thinking about 
the ideas and all these things, like what I just told you, made me cry. And I was shaking. I was like, oh, boy. So he asked a couple other people in the class, anybody else want to get rid of a fear? It came back to me, and I was obviously the most distraught, the most severe phobia reaction (laughs) in the room. So I got to go be the example for the class, and my life has changed. Being able to put that aside, so amazing, oh my goodness. I went up there forcing my legs to move. Like, you really do want to go change. Come on, body, let's go. And I got up there. And at the end, he says, so how is that now, Lydia? How does that feel now? And I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm going on a boat. Where's the next boat? Let's go do this. I was so excited. And I hadn't even realized how strong this was until I was coming home. And the plane left out of Long Beach, California, and I didn't take my my swimsuit. Who goes to a beach, like a city built for the beach? And you're like, yeah, I'm not going to bring a swimsuit. Who needs a swimsuit? And so anyway, I'm on the plane and it goes out over the ocean. And I was, I got a really good window seat. Not like sometimes you have the window seat where you get to see half of the window. This was the perfect window seat. It was just perfect. So I was actually recording on my phone what it's like to have a takeoff. My kids have never been on a plane before. And I thought they, they need to be aware so that they can not be scared. So and how cool that would be. So I was recording going out over the ocean. And I looked down at the boats and everything. And I was just curious. And wow, look at that. What are they doing? And then all of a sudden it hit me. I... I'm looking at water underneath me. I'm not having a freak out. I'm calm. I'm happy. Life is great. And I'm over water. And then I realized it wasn't just the idea of going scuba diving. It was the idea of going on a plane across the water, across the ocean. I've been in planes before. That was all great. It's definitely being over the water. We, uh, my husband and I, another time, had flown into San Francisco airport, which is right on the ocean, closer than Long Beach airport. And so they come in right low, right next to the ocean. And that was a completely different experience. Like, oh no, we're over the water. Ah, freak out. So my life has changed from this NLP breakthrough. And I am so excited that now I have all these certifications that I can go and help other people in bigger, better ways. So if you want to know more about that, I want you to go to lydiataggart.com. Just drop me a message. If you have any questions about that or anything else, you want to say anything at all, go ahead and drop me a line at lydiataggart.com. And you can also call in. Our phone number here is 1-866-451-1451. We can talk about and all these layers and things. Today, we're going to talk with Amy Earle. She is fantastic. She's one of my good friends. I'm really glad she can come on with me today. But before we get to that, I'll tell you a little bit more about my trip. It was 13 long day, hours each day, the whole week. And with the time change from where I live, There's no way I was going to be able to talk to my kids. I went the whole week without talking to any of my kids. I messaged my husband. He stayed up. Sweet, sweet husband. He's such a good man. He waited up for me to get back to the hotel each night to to say good (laughs) night. He was so tired. It was morning for him when I was at nighttime. So being away from the kids, I was really surprised at how many people thought that should be like traumatic or difficult. Because um, like two or three days in a row, somebody asked me, so how are you doing? And they're concerned for me. Like, how are you doing? How are you surviving without being by your kids? Because you're a mom, right? And so we're going to talk more with Amy Earle about our kids and raising multiples. She's got twins. I've got quadruplets. And we're going to bring her in after this break. Stay tuned. You're listening to TuneIn Radio, the BBM Global Network, Layers of Communication, and I am Lydia Taggart. Welcome back. I'm Lydia Taggart, your host for Layers of Communication on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
We were talking just before the break about fears. Today, we're going to discuss fears and anxieties and accepting those challenges that are presented in life. We've got our special guest, Amy Earle, today. She is a student at life for 46 years, mother of twins, followed up with a five-year-old, successfully raised kids, a deep thinker, a believer of miracles who is ready to change the world, and a certified emotional practitioner. Welcome to the show, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you. So I remember when I was told that I was expecting quadruplets and oh my goodness, life can change in just a short moment, right? Like we were talking earlier, how fast my world changed from jumping into that pool to save my brother. It can change in an instant. And being told that you're having multiples is one of those moments that changes your life. What do you remember about your experience? Yeah, I remember going in for my 12-week appointment with my OBGYN and who is an amazing, really gifted man. Anyway, and so he just likes to check the dates. And so he does a quick ultra down to, you know, to check your dates and see where you're at. And he doesn't charge you for that one. So I'm on the table and we're using kind of older thing. And he, he does, he, he, he likes to find out how many there are at that time. And so he was just scrolling around. I saw one baby on one side of the screen. And then he scrolls out and he comes back in and I see another baby on the other side. I'm like, I'm like, that's pretty cool. He made that baby jump from one side of the screen to the other. That is pretty cool. I wonder how he did that. <laughs> and then he scrolls way out and he's like, you know, you're having twins, and I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? That was just one of those life-changing moments. Like, it just it just is, and you're just like, you're entirely grateful for having two. But this, this was, this was, this was quite challenging. Oh, and I remember calling my husband from the, from the foyer. I said, hey, dear, guess what? We're having twins. Dead silent for at least three minutes. I'm like, hello, are you still there? <laughs> like, what happened? Anyway, and so, and then I needed to be on very reduced activity for the last 11 weeks of my pregnancy because I, pregnancy, and my husband was going to school, and yeah, that whole first year of life was just, it was really hard. For our family, it was really hard. My husband was trying to finish up school, and I said, hey, you finish now. We're, we've only got a few weeks left. Let's just hunker down, both of us. Let's just sit down and let's just do it. We're not going to put this off. It's not going to be any easier, you know, in the nine months old, you know. Let's just do mm-hmm. it. And we're like, yeah, let's just do it. And so he was gone for 11, he was gone for 12 hours each day. And I was home with the kids 12 hours each day. And then he came home. He's like, okay, now it's their turn. So then I would leave and run to the store or whatever. For a little, and I call it seven the hour. And then I come home and then we would start a whole day over again. We'd stay with the kids and then he'd go to the school all day and I'd be home with them. And yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we have a lot more in common than I thought we did. I went to my first appointment without my husband as well. And when I called him, I thought we were having twins. (laughs) And he he just says, oh, okay, cool. And he started like telling everybody at work, yay, we're having twins. Woohoo. And we already had two kids. And this was your first pregnancy, right? Your first Mm -hmm. bunch of kids Mm -hmm. was just the two. Just the two. I'm sorry. It was two. Just not four. (laughs) It was not four. And I would yeah. look at people with triplets, and I'm like, I don't even know how. I don't. <laughs> yeah. So, and we also had, so I I stayed longer at my appointment to get a closer look on the big ultrasound machine. And then I called my husband back and said, um, honey, it's not twins. It's, he's like, why? What's wrong? I was like, well, there's four of them. What? Four. How many? Four, you know, he can't quite get over that shock for a little bit. But um, 
we did kind of the same thing. My husband was just barely got approved for his MBA pro- program. And he's like, oh, man, do I need to not do that? And I said the same thing. No, it's not going to be any easier later. Just do it. Just we need to get that done or it's not going to happen ever. Right. And so um, that living without fear and full faith, like this is what our life is going to be. And let's go do something about it. That's just really amazing. And people are so much more resilient than we think. Don't you don't you think, Amy, you think that you've become a lot more resilient than you expected? In my life, yes. Yes, I have. But then I've heard so many people like, I couldn't do that. And I'm like, well, you know, sometimes in life you just, like, there are things you can control and there are things that you can't control. Like, you control what you have for dinner or what you're going to wear or what your house looks like. How many mm-hmm. kids you produce at one time is falls in the you cannot control this category and you just have to kind of go with it and live with it and learn and receive those blessings that are there for you through this experience. Right. We're presented with amazing opportunities. And I, I feel the same that um, I remember one time we were at a, a computer class. My kids were going to this, um, what was it, like a study group about how computer programs would be working for kids. And anyway, we're at this computer class and this sweet old grandma comes in with her little grandson every day. And I'm like, wow, she's amazing, taking care of her grandson, being a part of his life that he needs to help support him. And and she's just awesome because I think that would be kind of difficult. And I found out later she had cancer and she was doing all this while she was going through chemotherapy. And, you know, she's just being really awesome. And I was admiring her. And then she looked at me and said, wow, you are so awesome. I was like, me? look at you, you know, and we just, we do, we do a lot more than we think when we're handed something and we just have to deal with it. You never know how strong you can be until you try it. So I want to ask you a few questions about your kids and how it is. Cause for my trip last week, people were asking, how are you? And you haven't talked to your kids all week. How, how is that possible? You're a mom. How can you Uh, like be your own person too, right? So what's your experience with that? Well, I think it depends upon the type of a husband you have. If you have a very competent and can handle anything, then you can totally leave the house and have full confidence that things are going to run smoothly because of the person he is. I think it depends a lot with the husband. I would say a little challenging not to be not to talk to them like daily at least, like I do when I'm gone for events and stuff like that. I do try and at least check in with them daily, but a lot of times that doesn't even happen. And so, like, I've always been able to live my kids with my husband. Even when they were like, when they came home from the hospital, we spent three weeks in the hospital after they were born. Mm-hmm. And he would come home and he'd say, okay, now it's your time to and now it's your turn to go. And I often would leave him with two swim kids more than one set up than that. And he'd go, you just go, it'll be fine. You know, so I've been, I've left my husband all the time, but there are some people that don't feel comfortable with that option. And so I think that, I think that depends upon the person you chose to be with forever. So. Um. Oh, that's a fantastic point. Let's talk more when we get back from the break about husbands and communicating in a way that we can support each other in a couple's relationship for these other miracles and challenges that we have come along. After the break, we'll be doing that. You're listening to Tune In Radio and BBM Global Network. I'm Lydia Taggart, and this is Layers of Communication. Welcome back. This is Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and you're listening on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you'd like to call in, we would love to have you. The number is 1-866-451-1451. And if you'd like to have a comment or anything else that you have a question about, go to LydiaTaggart.com and drop us a comment in the contact form there. We're, we're visiting with Amy Earle, 
and talking about raising multiples, living life through these challenges that come up and how to communicate with our our partner, our husbands or, or whoever it is that you're working with in your relationships to help support each other on with what we need. So before the break, Amy was just talking about how she is able to go and do things for herself because she has such a fantastic husband. Amy, how did you get to that point? Because I had the same kind of sort of thing that other people were like, wow, you're out going and doing something. What about your kids? I'm like, well, I do have a husband. They do have a father. And I had lots of people helping. So it kind of grew from there that I, I didn't do things by myself all the time, but I did have opportunities. And my husband, like I said, he was going to school and I, he needed to go do that and he could leave me and I could leave him. And we're not like in an unhealthy kind of codependent sort of thing that we are allowing each other to be our own person, but working together for a greater purpose. So how did you get that with your husband? Um, you ask, like, how did I end up with, like, the most amazing man ever? And no, well, I would have to say... Did he come that way? <laughs> he did, actually. He did. I have not seen him. Some, some people refer to their husband as fourth child or the fifth child. I have never done so because my husband is not childish. I mean, he is, he has a big heart and a playful heart, but he's not childlike. And, um... I just, I don't, I don't quite get that whole line of thinking <clears throat> that your husband's another child because he's not, he's your partner, he's your soulmate. Um, my husband just is pretty much like how we met and how it all came together. The story is pretty amazing. And, but really, honestly, he is, he is, he is my soulmate. He is the person that I was that was determined and I had to wait a long time to meet him. I had like before our paths actually crossed. And so like I was, I was older when I got married. I didn't get married until I was 28, but I had lived life and experienced life of all this. I wasn't like just putting myself in cold storage, waiting for Mr. Wright to walk along. I did, I did things. I served the mission. I played, I danced. I experienced life, and so I, I developed myself to the point where he was able to come into the picture, and then we were able to get married. We have, and, and when we got married, we are four best friends. Like, I had known him for over a year, and so we knew each other really well at that point, and so that's the way it happened for us. I know that doesn't happen for everybody, but that's the way it happened for me. Oh, how fun. I love how you say you were older and you were 28. Because some people think, you know, this is perspective thing. Some people think that that's not really very old to be getting married. And I was very young, uh, young enough that my in-laws were, were pretty worried. We'll call it worried and concerned that my husband was marrying someone so young until they met me. And they're like, oh, she's mature. Okay. Because I got married when I was still 18. And, you know, almost 22 years later, I don't regret that at all. And he is my soulmate. And I, I love that. But there have been times, I mean, it has not always been easy. There have been times that we've had to challenge our communication skills and we've had to adjust and change to, um, to align our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for to align our frame of reference so we could understand each other better and go from there. Right. Um, I was the oldest in my family my husband's the youngest in his. So that right there, you got some differences going on. And, you know, you have two different worlds, no matter which relationship you have and bringing them together can, it creates an experience, right? Just an, is, can be a, whatever you decide to call that experience, a challenge or a growing or an amazing, an amazing experience. And then you throw in having multiples, so I'm sure you had, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure whole, like, can you even hear what your husband is trying to say in the first place? 
And so the right. communication can cross easily, easily. When you have two kids or more, I can't even imagine it. But if you have two kids truly at the same time, you're like, you don't even, you don't even I mean, it's just physically impossible sometimes to hear. And so you just have to have love and patience and respect for each other. In those moments, you're like, he really does have my best, you know, he really does have my back. He has my better interests, you know. I'll always right. assume the very, very best. Always assume the very, very best, and that that will be a blessing for both of you. Awesome. Well, we're going to talk more about always assuming the best when we get back from this break. You're listening to Tune In Radio on the BBM Global Network. I'm Lydia Taggart, and this is Layers of Communication. If you'd like to call in, the number is 1-866-451-1451, and we will talk to you soon. Stay Welcome back to Layers of Communication. You're listening to Tune In Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. If you'd like to call in, that number is one 866 451 1451. And we're speaking today with Amy Earl, mother of twins, and just believer in miracles, ready to change the world. Fantastic woman over here. She's talking with us about respect and always believing the best and when those kids are screaming and you can't even hear the person in the room with you what do you do at that point amy what do you do when they're just so loud and so crazy well now that my kids are older we go on a date we solve the problem we take time out for ourselves and we go sometimes we just run to walmart and grab whatever we need or something so but yeah but enjoy those moments when it's so loud and it's so chaotic and stuff like that because those moments won't be around forever. I don't know about yours, but my my kids are really close and they love to chat with each other before they go to bed. And so sometimes we'll talk for an hour after the lights are turned off and they just talk about whatever, you know. I mean, they've been with each other all day long, but they still find things to talk about at night. And I know when they leave the house and when they go on their own, I know I will miss hearing that chatter in the bedroom. Yes. My kids are really close too. And okay, if for the listeners, if you're ever out there and your kids start screaming and I smile at you or there's some weirdo looking at you, I'll tell you what I'm thinking when I'm looking over at some crying, screaming kid and a parent or their caretaker trying to calm them down. I am so happy. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Look how loud they are. Look how loving they are trying to help each other. And so don't be afraid or embarrassed that you're making a scene and people are looking at you because it really touches my heart. It really, really does. It takes me back to those memories when the kids were a bit louder. Well, I don't know. I think they're really loud now, too. And that just might be because there's so many of them, right? But I like, I just came back on the airplane and there's kids they get their little ears hurting and they cry. And I look over there and go, oh, you sweet little loud thing. Oh, and I remember one time at a park, there was a boy who we were having lunch at the park. And this other little boy was not interested in having lunch. Oh, this is making me tear up a little bit. His sweet mom was trying so hard to help him eat his lunch. He was autistic and he was having a, a little episode and I could see her getting frustrated because I was looking at her and I don't know how many other people were looking at her, but she was like, oh man, people are looking, right? And and people get worried that you're going to be judged when you're having a child's experience and you're not like, you're not in a closed space, right? You're out in the public. And I went and I told her, you're doing such a good job. You're such a good mom. And I said, you know, my kids like this too. And we have become dear friends now. And if you have an episode out in public, just trust that at least one person, at least I am happy that you're doing that and being a parent or, or caring for a child. I really, really appreciate people who don't just shut them down and try to hide them. Have you had experiences where you've been out with your twins and, and your younger is it a boy or a girl? Your younger son? I have all boys. All boys. And all boys. And they are boys. But <clears throat> I had one of the people that I've worked with in my past. She taught me 
to value my kids and to take them out in the community and just take them and realize it's not going to, because I used to be worried, like, oh my gosh, I have to be perfect. I have to behave perfectly. Well, guess what? I just have different thinkers for kids and that's just the way they are and stuff like that. And so ever since I worked with this person, I have really tried, even if my husband can't come with me, I just let, we just go places and we do things anyway. And my kids love to learn and grow and experience and stuff like that. People, they like to have experiences and stuff like that. And so, and they have needed to be out of the house every day since they were three. They just, I don't know, they're, they just need to go and do and experience. And so I really have tried to get them to go and to do and experience things and stuff like that. And every time I do, I usually think these three things like, what the heck was I thinking? Why am I doing this? And why, why, like I took my kids to the July 24th, you know, parade and I lost my son again. Benjamin, he is just this free spirit. The freest spirit you'll ever see in your entire life. And I, and I, but I lost him for like, I don't know, like five, six minutes, maybe even eight, you know, the whole terror, like, but he, he does it to me all the time and whatever. And so, and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done taking kids places by myself and whatever. But you know what? You get past that. You learn, you learn as a mom to handle the situation that you need to handle and then you can move on and enjoy life. So don't stay home just because your husband can't go with you or whatever. Because you're just mm-hmm. need to experience life too as well. And so just, you know, just bear in mind that it might be a little rocky at the beginning, but to keep going and keep trying to let your kids experience life the way they need to. Yes, keep going, keep trying. I, I remember when I only had the two before I had all six of my kids and we were involved in play dates and we were going to the zoo and we had something to do every fun Friday. We were going on some sort of outing with our friends and really getting that social environment for us and for both of us, for all of us, for the kids and me, because parents need social time too, right? And when we had the quads, it was like, oh, no, now there's so many of them. Oh, no. And I thought, no, why would I say that that kind of life is good for a child and not for more than one? We should all be able to go out and do things and and experience life, like you say. And I remember one time my dad actually told me, thank you for taking them out and letting them experience and try to learn how to behave in public because now they're just amazing people. And we'll talk more about how amazing life can be when we get back from the break. This is Layers of Communication on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. We'll be back real soon. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. You're listening to BBM Global Network on TuneIn Radio. This is Layers of Communication. If you'd like to call in, our number is 1-866-451-1451. And we are talking today with Amy Earle. And we're going to talk now about awesomeness. And how do you take your challenges out into the world, all your little blessings, and still like stay sane, right? How do you deal with life, living around, all the life stuff going around what you're dealing with in your own personal life? These layers that we see through that are these experiences that were added onto our core. How do we keep connected to our core? What do you have, Amy? What do you think about that? Well, I think if you look at the really big picture and My kids are really talented and really gifted, but the world labels those talents and gifts, like as ADHD and auditory process, I thought, and I've passed those gifts on to them. Just a little, I mean, just a tad bit of those, and part of those, but then I always tell my kids, my older two, I said, these are your gifts to develop. And it's just like learning how to play play a baseball game or, you know, learning how to ride a bike or whatever. These are your gifts and these are yours to develop. However, the world needs to see them come through you. 
and stuff like that. And so we're still working for those gifts, and it's a little challenging to raise twins, such gifted things. But I know, I know, because I know how I know how brilliant they are, and I just know that this is there, and it just needs to come out. For two and a half, they were. I was sitting in my garage, and they were playing with my bike. I'm like, oh, look, they're interested in something. I can sit down for five seconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you thought that, huh? <laughs> yes, so, I'm like, if you're interested in my bicycle, I don't care what you do with it. Let's just let you play with it. I turn around, and they took off my bicycle chain. That's two and a half. <laughs> Which showed oh. me, like, oh, my gosh. I am so in for it, and you are so gifted, <laughs> and I have gone back to them, like, you are gifted, and this is, and I am going to go with the fact that, because every weakness that we experience is really our strength in disguise, and you just have to kind of go with that, and you have to learn how to develop those weaknesses into strengths, so. Okay, that and reminds me of. And they're like, they're, they're <laughs> lucky to have a mom who gets you 100%. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are the best kids for, or the best moms for our kids. That's one thing I I really want all mothers and parents to know. You are their parent on purpose. That's, that's just the way yeah. it is. There's nobody else who could do it the way that you can do it. Even if you think that you're doing a horrible job or whatever, it's, it's the best that they could have. They're yours on purpose for a reason. So this one time, we were at our wits end about nap time, right? And I put all the kids in one room. It's actually the room I'm sitting in now. I've converted it to my office. So it's hilarious. We took everything out of the room. There's no doors on the closet. There's nothing for them to climb up. There's not a dresser. There's nothing in here at all. And we just had mattresses on the floor for them to sleep. I was like, you are taking a nap. I'm closing the door. I need my personal time. I need to like catch my breath for a minute. And when I went back to look at them, there's nothing in the room, nothing at all that they could get into trouble with, but they found something anyway. They, when I opened the door, they had taken the heater vent off and were trying to stuff the smallest one down the heater vent. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something exciting. There's always something exciting. So, Amy, let's switch gears a little bit. What have you done to streamline your process of your day? Like, I tried to get rid of things in the room to make it safer and easier to, to feel like they were okay for me to leave them for a minute. Do you have any tips or tricks that were, were helpful for you that might help our audience? Um. <clears throat> I'll be 100% transparent and vulnerable at this moment. Um, that is my gift that I am still trying to develop in my kids. So I have not quite mastered this gift yet. And so I, I don't know, like I've, I've done, I've really had pretty much been their brains because they're just, sometimes I just check out of life. And so I really have been their brains on this earth. And this year, I'm like, okay, now you're in eighth grade. You are, you can do this. You can, you can take care of this by yourself. And then, there's been a little bit of resistance in this department. So we're still not quite together in that department. But it will happen because it is shown up for a reason, and it's a gift that we need to develop as a family. That's beautiful. It is a balance, isn't it? Being able to connect at the heart and understand and love someone so much. And where is that balance of being able to let them be their own person and grow up? I know after being gone all week, my kids were like, mom's home, mom's home, mom, 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 mom. And they're so excited to have me home. And I was like, oh, one at a time. Let's, okay, maybe just two at a time. Can we pick somebody's turn? Whose turn is it? And at the end of the night, I have one boy who, my middle child, we call him Dallas. He is, he's just such a sweetheart. And he has been dealing with a lot in life. Being the middle child of quadruplet family is kind of crazy in itself. But um, anyway, so we're sitting down and I was like, what can I do to help you? Now that I'm back and, oh, I got to tell you too, my 16 year old boy, he, he has autism Asperger's. And so 
it, it's interesting to see how he processes things differently than everybody else a little bit. And he was being kind of quiet, my oldest boy. And he says, I'm just ready for a PPI, mom. I need a PPI. And he said, you know, that's a parent, personal parent interview. We have just like time set aside for each kid, usually weekly. And, and they can talk to us about whatever. And we ask them questions and stuff. And it's just like a download of this is what's going on in my life. And this is what I need help with. And anyway, so I was sitting with Dallas, my middle child, and doing this PPI process with him. And we think that we're letting them grow up so fast and they still want to be kids, but you want them to be responsible. And where's this balance? And he said to me, mom, you think I can do everything, but I'm just not there yet. So can you help me remember that I need to do my math every day? I know it's something I have to do every day, but I don't like it. I don't want to do it. It's easy to forget about. And can you just like sit down and say, hey, it's time for math. And I was like, wow, you're, you're a 14, almost 15 year old kid asking mom for help. And my oldest son, Steven, he's, he's saying, mom, I need to talk. And, you know, there is a need as children grow up, as, as all of us need to connect and, and just talk with people and know that we're loved and cared for. So I think that's one of your gifts, your, your, mastered already that you are able to sit and connect with your kids, even if they're not sitting and they're bouncing off the walls or whatever. But I think that that's one thing that you've mastered, Amy. Oh, thank you. I'll put that down in the yes column. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, would you say it is and we have, we have connected and we have and I do have deeper, I'm a deep thinker and my kids are deep thinkers. And so we do have deeper conversations than normal 13 year old kids and moms have, but I get them and I get them and I understand them and I love them and I love what they're doing. And I love the, ch I love the fact that they're willing to get up and get out the door and, and the fact that we're learning our dance together we're learning the dance together and so oh awesome. that's beautiful <clears throat> so beautiful all right well amy we're gonna need to take a break real quick can you tell us where they can find you and can't stay in contact with you um you can either call me um actually why don't you just email me my uh email address is amy amie dot master connector at gmail.com Thank you, Amy. We're going to be going to a break now, and then we'll come back and have a summary of our, our experience here on the show today and maybe have some extra fun tips that come to me on the break. You're listening to Tune In Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and this is Layers of Communication. Stay Welcome back. This is Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thanks for being with us today. We are just visiting with Amy Earle, and she has some great insight on how to deal with the fear of stepping into the challenges and having multiples. She's had twins and keeping that relationship with her spouse, her husband, and still just being able to master and develop her gifts and balance in life, learning how to really connect at the heart. And I think that's, that's what I want to talk about and remind us that it is just priceless to be able to keep who we are at the core and take all of these challenges and experiences, whatever comes up, remember that they are added to who you are. They're there to build you up and strengthen you at the core. It's just, it's just a blessing added to you. It helps us to see the world in different ways. We can relate to other people in different ways. And if we can experience our life from the core, not afraid of what other people might think of us if we take our kids out in public or if something embarrassing happens, um, we can just 
no, oh, release that fear. Well, I was talking first at the at the first of the show about my fear, fo- my phobia release, and how much easier life is. Oh my goodness, I flew home without a fear flying over the ocean, and it was fantastic. So if you want to know any more about the NLP breakthrough sessions or redeciding how you see and process your memories, you can contact me at LydiaTaggart.com. And Amy Earl is also, um, she's also available as a certified emotional practitioner. And she's at Amy at, or excuse me, Amy.MasterConnector, I believe, dot com. And Oh, dear, I'm going to have to verify that with her and make sure you get that. If you go to LydiaTaggart.com and sign up for the the ebook there, and you can be on the newsletter as well and get all of these information and tips and making life all that much better. Remember, you're awesome and you're worth it. And the people that we communicate in this world are worth it, too. Always plan on having the best intentions at heart with anyone who comes in contact with you. And remember, I love you. You are awesome and you are worth it. And we can do this stuff together. All right, um, next week, we're gonna be having, um, oh, what day is next week? Are we having it next week? Next week, we're gonna have um, an Anadel Lemon. Yes, and talking about trauma. Oh, that's going to be really great. Talking with Anna Del Lemon next week about trauma. So come back again next week. This is Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Have a great time. Thanks. Bye. You've been listening to Layers of Communication with your host, Lydia Taggart. Tune in next week as we break through the layers in order to communicate and connect down to your core on Lydia Taggart's Layers of Communication.